you know, Keith and I have been kind of beating up on Toyota a little bit lately because of their lack of, you know, I don't know, flash in in the industry, in the market. Um, but there is some stuff going on back behind the scenes with Toyota, I think, that, that we're gonna we're starting to see. And we talked about the Venza recently coming back out, and it looks like it's it's really going to be a a, a very well uh, received um, vehicle, and I think it's going to perform well just based on the specs on that thing, which is really nice. And then you see a lot of, um, you know, Toyota has really been into the, like the, the hybrid more so than anything, not necessarily a uh, EV. So market. the most a, negative publicity that i have seen towards toyota lately is is on that very topic jay so people people say well what's toyota doing they're lagging behind you know ford now has all electric vehicles general motors has all electric vehicles that they have announced uh well they have some in in production that you can buy today too yeah um yeah. uh yeah. everybody is jumping on this bandwagon right like uh That's right. Uh, Hyundai, who we were just talking about, right? Like, there's, there's. I mean, kind of, I could just go down the list, but I'm. What is I'm that not, one yeah. called? Like the Ionic or something? Yeah, the you, this is where I need you know side shot in here to kind of take us through all yeah. that. But yeah, but the point being, Toyota is noticeably absent from this all electric lineup. Like they, they don't have one. Mm-hmm. No, and they so really don't. There's been some concern because they've kind of made comments to the to the media like. Yeah, we just think hybrid. We're we're focusing on hybrids. Well, what they didn't say or what they haven't said is, it looks like from this article they're playing the long game. Yeah, and the long game is uh, it's hard. It's difficult for all, even grown ups. You should try it with a you know a group of ten to twelve year old baseball players. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I know that guy hits him to the fence every time he's up, but but trust me, if you guys just focus on the long game and we work mm-hmm. on how to deal with everybody around him uh right. w- we could still you know and and, yeah. th- and then you know so looks like toyota's playing the long game here looks like they're yeah. maybe thinking about generation two or three in terms of an all-electric vehicle i think so man that's kind of what i perceive as well um you know they're and, and again, they're they're not putting the cart before the horse, which is what a lot of EV manufacturers actually are doing because they're putting out you know vehicles and they still kind of lack in range uh, or battery technology. And you you're always hearing on the back end of those conversations that well, there's so and so battery company up in Michigan, they're working on solid state battery, right? You know, whatever. And, well, and the Chevy me, Volt was a good example of that, right? Like the at, first time it first generation of that came out and it was like horrible range. Oh, it, it, it was. It really was. It's a good car, good car. I mean, it's you know if if you got to give GM credit there. Um, however, the range is not not really where it needs to be for sure. And and obviously, I think that. And you're right, them playing the long game here, because if you're going to put out an EV, the first thing that's going to come to your mind is, what's the range? Yep. Okay? Because that's what people's biggest fear is with an electric vehicle is, is can I go for a long distance on a charge, or am, am I going to buy this vehicle, am I limited to just around town? Um, I think with this technology, and we've spoken about this in the past, in a few past podcasts, um, where this technology continues to move forward and i do believe it is the answer to the ev market which is the solid state battery so for those of you uh, lithium ion batteries um they're they're typically pretty huge um and they have an issue with with thermally overheating they cause fires they're heavy um which also you know drags a lot of things down with the vehicle and, and reduces the range um, these new solid state uh, batteries, they basically take those things out of the equation. So you're, um, uh, if you just want to take it back to like um, um, just the you know the basic science of it, right? Mm-hmm. You're you're looking at um, a gaseous state battery mm-hmm. in terms of the current lithium ion and there are problems with those if they overheat or they overcharge or they over drain right. mm-hmm. to where they can expand those gases inside get very unhappy they they are constantly in a state of of um unsettlement you know that's not a technical term but they're always agitated 
So the solid state stuff offers mm-hmm. more stability because it is a solid right. uh, energy cell. And they're, right? they're little cells. They're, and, yeah. yeah. And so that's where Toyota is is basically focusing right now. That's what this, this, this article is about. Toyota's solid state battery tech is on schedule for, they're saying, the 2025 production. So they're working um, with Panasonic. Did you see that in the article? I, I, I did. Um, so the prototype cells have it, yeah, yeah, which is fantastic, which makes complete sense. Um, and there's two things that are going to be going on here. Not only will that technology aid in the advancement of the electric vehicles, but it's going to aid in the in, in the introduction of a lot more products with these types of batteries, this type of technology, which is going to be a safer technology. And, and what I say that is your cell phone. Keith and I talked about this in that same podcast. So, folks, you know, one of the biggest problems you have with cell phones or lithium-ion batteries anyway, when you go on like an aircraft, these things can explode on you. And you take a – this thing is what, like, you know, maybe a quarter-inch thick here, maybe not even that much. These things, when they overheat and they go bad on you like that, man, they actually can increase in size to about six inches thick Some in some cases I've seen where it, where it will break the case. So – this is pretty important technology yeah. for that. Again, w- weight is a factor. So, But the solid-state batteries replace the liquid electrolyte used in, in the current lithium-ion batteries with a solid material, and you know, hence the name. Um, so part of the, the article says, advocates of the technology claim it will offer greater density than current battery technology, allowing for more range without increasing the size of the battery pack. Yeah. Remember, that's if you're well, an electric vehicle manufacturer, that's what you're trying to do. Is remember increase Dyson, the range. right? He, yes. we, we did a podcast on this. He had a vehicle. He was trying to do this, and he couldn't pull off the solid state. And we discussed on that podcast, like, well, maybe he's just – it's too far down the road, and it wasn't cost-effective, and maybe he's looking in another direction like hydrogen. But, mm-hmm. you know, this is where I can see somebody like Toyota having – a little bit more, a little bit more R and D dollars, maybe than Dyson to throw at this sure. this problem. Um, now, now Panasonic is saying, and I'm going to do what we did on the on the on the SEMA podcast. Panasonic mm-hmm. is saying that solid state isn't coming on their batteries until the l- later part of the decade, right? Right. Um, but maybe that's because they have an agreement with Toyota, and Toyota gets first shot, and then they become available to the rest of the world, right? Right. That's so, right, man. Because Toyota came out and said 2025 production. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's an and important I've got, point. I may have a different article. Um, I'm pulling mine off of Green Car Reports on this one. Um, so what they say is that in the case of Toyota's prototype cells, the electrolyte is sulfur-based. Um, Kaita said working with this material has proven difficult because engineers had to find a way to make it both dense and flexible yep. without affecting battery performance. The cells made with this electrolyte also need to be manufactured in an ultra-dry environment, which makes scaling up for volume production more challenging. So hence what you were saying, maybe later part of the decade, but it's interesting because right. Toyota is really, really pushing this thing. Read, so. read, right. So, so okay, but re, re, I want you to, so read the next, read about the charging gotcha. time. But, but before you do that, I want to make a point yeah. here, okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. So we said Toyota was absent from, they're, they're going, right now it's all hybrid. There is right. no standalone EV here in the United mm-hmm. States that you can get that's Toyota branded, that I know of, okay? Right. And we're going, why? Okay, well, go ahead and skip, go ahead and skip generation one go right to generation two you know tesla's already got that market cornered right like everybody right now is playing to catch up to tesla ford's doing right. it gm's doing it tesla came out with it they were the mm-hmm. first um standard offering they were the big mm-hmm. player that got to the market first so why go into that arena and compete if what you can offer in a generation two offers significant advantages oh. like how long is it going to take to charge this thing jay 15 minutes, it says, man. I mean, in addition to greater energy density, Toyota's prototype cells can fully charge in 15 minutes, and the automaker is targeting capacity loss of just 10% over 30 years. That's incredible, man. Yeah, that is and incredible. they've got a working prototype on a, uh, let's see, I, I read this in the article somewhere, but they said, we've got this in a working prototype vehicle right now. Yes, they do. Um, 
Wow, check this out, too. In the same article, it says the promise of better performance has attracted interest from several other automakers, including Volkswagen, right. which invests in solid-state battery firm QuantumScape <clears throat> and also uh, hopes to have solid-state batteries ready for production by 2025. Vacuum maker Dyson, which we just spoke about, uh, stopped its electric car project but may look to sell its solid state battery tech in the future and samsung claims that a solid state tech it has under development will effectively double energy density as well yeah so it's a big deal this this whole solid state thing is it's you're it's coming it's coming right and that's why i said it's not only it's just not this just doesn't just apply to cars this is this is gonna this application of this technology will be across the board in many things and so you'll start seeing devices change i mean your phones are heavy right now just wait guys i mean in in five years i can't imagine what this thing is going to be like um and you've already got the flip phones you know where they they open up like a tablet and they close yeah i've seen those right yeah that's that's an android i think right uh microsoft released one last week as well um Then uh, Motorola brought back the Razor oh, yeah, as a right. foldable. The Razor came back. That's right. So it's uh, it's it's in play.